people get up in arms about a lot of things nowadays. Uh, outrage is very popular. It's extremely monetizable to get mad about things and scream. And people were upset that they brought on Phoebe Waller-Bridge as a writer because I guess she's a woman. I don't know. That's all I can, that's all I can really think of. <laughs> and I'll be very real with you guys. I notice when movies try to shove things down my throat. I've talked about that in the past. I understand when people in Hollywood who are looking at the political sphere think, well, we should probably make a movie that sort of addresses this stuff, or we should make a film that feels like, you know, people on social media will give us praise for making it, and they don't necessarily have good intentions, and they're just looking at money, and they're just looking at that type of praise that they will get for making that type of film. I understand there are plenty of people in suits, behind desks, making those decisions, who don't give a shit about the messages their films have, and oftentimes those movies suffer as a result. But I also understand that some movies are really fucking good at it. And I can always tell when someone is genuine and when someone is just doing it because it's a talking point. No Time to Die does not have a single part where that radar went off for me and I thought, oh, they just, uh, they just put that in there to put that in there. That never happened for me while I watched this movie. But people are going to go in with these expectations that they have built up because of things they've read online or articles or speculation, and they're going to feel a certain way about the movie, and I really don't think the movie deserves that type of outrage at all. I think it's kind of silly. Lashana Lynch is also really entertaining in the film. This has been reported in various articles a long time ago, so I don't consider this a spoiler, but, you know, whatever, I'm just kind of putting that out there before I say it. But yeah, she does play 007 in the film, because as I already said, when the film starts, James Bond is retired. So 007 is just a number. And there's a pretty entertaining sequence when Bond and her have a little argument about what that number really means. And I think it's really cool. I think it's smart the way they handled it. And it never feels like I'm better than you because I'm 007 or whatever. You know, all these bullshit things people are always concerned about don't fucking matter, you know? Just watch the movie, go watch the movie. Give the artist the benefit of the doubt, and then you can have an opinion. You know, if you hate the movie, whatever, you, you hate the movie, but at least watch it first. The movie also has what I found to be a very satisfying finale with tons of 007 references everywhere if you've seen all the films. I think No Time to Die is a damn good movie. So go support a big theatrical film so we can get some more theatrical films because I really miss the theater, and just going to see this film felt so special, strangely. Something about the past couple years, probably barely seeing any movies in theaters, have made experiences like this feel so much more special than they used to. So if I were to rank all of Daniel Craig's Bond films, Casino Royale is still my favorite, and then Skyfall, and then I would put No Time to Die, then Spectre and Quantum of Solace.